Hey, I'm Ryan, and this is Creative Sound Lab, a weekly TV show with recording tips, pointers, and a whole lot of other things. Well, this week I'm talking about three insanely popular electric guitar recording techniques that really are kind of bad habits. And then I want to show you what I would do instead. So I hope you join me in this really cool episode for recording electric guitar. Okay, so what are these bad habits? Well, you know, you'll see it all the time how people are, you know, pairing up two different microfo microphones on the electric guitar amp. And, you know, that's not entirely a bad idea, but you have to ask yourself, well, why are you doing that? Are you trying to capture the entire sound of the amp? Are you trying to capture um, the lows with, say, one mic, the mid-range with another mic? Um, and why exactly are you using two microphones? And I'd, I'd like to kind of challenge you and say, well, if you're going to do this for guitar, does that mean you're also going to continue that mindset when you do a kick drum, you know, where you'll have just these huge lows and these like amazing overtones to the kick. And then you get to the toms and you like have larger than life toms. And pretty soon, you know, you go down the mix in your tracking day and really you don't have room for anything because everything is taking up all the space. And so why is it that you need to record um, the entire sound of the amp. So I'd like to challenge that and say, well, why don't you just pick one mic or the other? So my first kind of bad habit, and this is just really my opinion, but is trying to use two different mics. Uh, the simpler can be a, a killer sound. So a simpler sound just with one microphone, if placed correctly and following the steps that, that I'd like to suggest to you today, you can get amazing guitar sounds just with one mic. The second kind of bad habit is trying to place mics in the back of the amp and, and just getting uh, carried away with that. Um, I've heard great results with that, okay? So it's up to you if you'd like to continue to do that. But for the same reason, you know, does this electric guitar need to occupy the entire spectrum? Do you really need to have a full, encompassing, comprehensive sound from your electric? Or can you intentionally go small? Can you pigeonhole that sound into a certain spot, forecasting where you want it to go in the mix? So um, once again, um, it introduces phasing issues. Uh, where exactly is the speaker in the cabinet? Uh, is this mic equidistant from that membrane? Is the back head, you know, do you measure it? Do you, you know, and there's a way that you can actually listen and try to cancel out the two mics and then you flip the one as soon as you get it like mostly canceled and when you hear it mostly canceled you know that it's time to leave the mics alone flip the phase and they add together really nicely but it presents a complication in the middle of a busy session so uh, once again why are you trying to collect the entire sound of the electric guitar amp and it's fine if you want to use that but could you use a simpler technique uh, the third so-called bad habit uh, is really just using tons of pedals. Uh, is there any reason why you just can't go directly in from your guitar? So a 10-foot cable out of your guitar and your amp. You know, it just amazes me how many tones are available between the settings on the amp, the gain structure, uh, choice of microphone, and then work down the line, uh, choice of guitar, choice of pickups, um, you know, uh, pickup selector, um, even uh, pick uh, thickness and things. So there are just so many tones already available to us. And if we can get an amp that we like for its overdrive or for its tremolo, that's one less pedal we have to have on the floor. Um, so, you know, do you have to have your tuning pedal uh, in the circuit when you play your takes? No, you could probably take that out. It takes an extra second, but it cleans up just simplifies your path to your amp. Also, other, other pedals that you're not using for this specific part. Um, if you're not using the delay for a rhythm track, then take the delay out. If you need it for the lead part, then put it back in. You know, go on a case-by-case -case basis of what you need for that very moment. So, 
Once again, using two mics on the front is kind of the number one bad habit. Using just two mics uh, in the in the back and the front, you know, so you have kind of a pairing that look at each other. That I call bad habit number two. And then just using too much pedal. So let's talk about how we can improve on this kind of um, this paradigm, this mindset um, that's just so popular to do. Okay, so obviously the fundamentals are you know making sure that. Your guitar is clean as it could be. Your pedal and, and cable path is as healthy and clean as it should be. Make sure you have good, clean cables with good connections. And really it comes time to where you want to place the amp in the room. And this is key. Uh, notice that I have this on a piano bench and I'm also avoiding the walls and the corners. So I'm avoiding the floor, the walls, and the corner with my placement of this guitar amp. It's because it's going to resonate, it's going to interact with any sort of boundary that it's next to. So I want to make sure that this guitar amp is giving me its flavor in the most neutral kind of way. I've also had, you know, little egg crates and things that um, basically are like this kind of honeycomb plastic design that are stackable. And, you know, so that's just a way of getting your amp off the floor. It's not really in a box. It's more in a, um, a honeycomb type of structure that it's not going to resonate within whatever you put it on. You know, a stool would be another great thing. Um, this piano bench is actually stuffed with foam, so that's where I keep kind of the isolation foam just to make sure that that won't resonate. So I have the amp up off the floor. Uh, second thing is that I keep the amp kind of at a shooting direction. Uh, so I don't shoot it into the, the wall or the back wall, but I shoot it across the room. And, you know, just right there, just to the left of the camera, I have a room mic. If I wanted to use it, it's there, ready to go. Now, going on to the uh, AC power, okay? So we've positioned it. Now it's time to plug in the amp. And this is another kind of cool trick that, that I really use all the time. I had my amp tech create this box. Essentially, it's just a transformer that takes the power down from you know 120 something volts depending on the fluctuation of power that day it stuffs it down about 15 volts what this is doing is kind of twofold it's isolating the power it's you know cleaning it up just like uh you know like a hum um a noise uh, filter would do so it's cleaning up my power but it's also down um you know down stepping the amount of vol voltage that this guitar amp's receiving. So this is essentially emulating with the voltages coming out of this plug here. It's emulating like an early 1960s power supply. Okay, 50s and 60s, uh, somewhere in the 60s, uh, they started delivering more power um, as part of their regular service, considered line level, uh, here in the US speaking. And so um, any old amp, I always plug it into there any new amp, it tends to um, be a touch quieter and it also is a little bit cleaner. So I typically will always filter my power and step it down as long as it doesn't have any adverse effects. So that's the AC power. Just consider the fact that uh, that is the fuel for your guitar tone. If you don't have clean power, uh, then it may really affect the tone that you're getting. And the next step in what I do for my recording techniques of electric guitar is that I actually will have the player play the song that you're recording, not just any song, but the exact part that you're working on. And then I'll step away. So uh, this amp is, you know, a couple feet off the ground, so I'll stoop down on my knees and just kind of listen about 10 feet out. Just listen to the sound of the amp. Does it sound bright? Does it sound dull? I don't, you know hover above the amp, but I try to get out in front of it to really get a sense of what tones it's getting. If I don't like the tone, I'll ask uh, the guitarist if it's okay if I kind of, you know, tweak the knobs of the pickups or the selection or the tone knobs. I'll also work with the onboard tone here. Once again, listening, adjust, listening, adjust. It's really quite quick of a process once you get the hang of it, but you got to make sure that you're not listening to the amp on the floor, but you raise it up and then you kind of get about you know eye level with the amp and listen to it from a distance. That way you really know what you expect to get when you put a microphone in front of it. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go and start setting up mics. And this is kind of a big decision time because you want to make sure that you're choosing the right mic for the job. 
Now, the standard kind of mic, SM57, you know, we see these a lot. This is pretty good. Uh, it may not be the best, but you certainly will never get a, a guitar tone that just absolutely is terrible with it. You may, okay, if you haven't followed these steps and kind of set up and listen in the room and make sure that you like the sound of the amp in the room, but this really isn't going to completely butcher the sound. Uh, now, I kind of do a few odds and ends that's a little different. Uh, this SM57, I've taken the transformer out of it. So this just unscrews. You get a soldering iron and you just unsolder uh, the transformer and just connect them back. Connect these two wires. It comes out of the, the uh, diaphragm up here. Connect it back into the pins so it's just directly uh, connected to the diaphragm. Um, I also use a cable which I've soldered in a couple different resistors and modified um, the guitar cable itself to be kind of a part of the circuit, a tone shaping part of the circuit. So when I plug in uh, this mic into this cable, I'm running it at 500 ohms so it's a little bit smoother on the top end. The pressure on the diaphragm is less so it's going to round off the top end and not cause any sort of weird, um, you know, uh, sympathetic vibrations or anything. So it is a subtlety. I know you maybe you think that it's like kind of a voodoo thing that you think I'm hearing, but um, I, I've tested it several times and I, I'm always pleased with the results. So this is one thing that I do, but sometimes this is too bright. So I'll use just a standard 57. I can also go for another modification that I've done, which is an SM58. And this is not an SM57, it sure does look like it, but all I've done is taken off the filter from that SM58. Now if you look, there's actually a difference in the uh, length of the diaphragms. So if I were to put an SM57 in the same position, it would actually kind of stick more into the grill cloth of the amp. So what this is doing is, is that the actual diaphragm can go even closer to that amp. And once the diaphragm is even closer, I'm getting a little bit more proximity effect. I'm getting none of the coloration here. And the top end is just, you know, it's unprotected, so I'm getting even more top end. So that's led me to, to really use the SM58 without the uh, lollipop filter. Uh, it's an incredible guitar amp mic. It really works well. Uh, it opens it up. It sounds fuller. It really sounds nice. Another uh, microphone I use a lot is uh, this vintage uh, 421. This mic sounds incredible. Got great top end. Uh, it, is, it, it is different than uh, the black versions of the same era uh, or, or similar era, you know, slightly after this. So I've compared and contrasted those um, but this is a great sounding mic that I use a lot. So uh, depending on what sound you want, you know, you have to kind of make the selection. And just know that uh, you can make the selection in the moment and just try to have confidence when you make it. Uh, it's better to make the selection of mics and the tones and, and things like that when you're inspired rather than, you know, weeks later when you're mixing it and you're all alone in the studio and it's just the energy is totally different. So it's better to make decisions on tone when you're in the moment. Finally, the position. And this is also key. So I've selected the mic and now it's positioning time. I typically start out right in the center of the speaker, really common technique, and I'll vary it back and forth. But what I've been doing lately is it'll actually angle it. So I've done it where I can angle, I can just drape the mic directly over the front and just loop the cable and that's just a lazy man's technique. But for some amps that are really honky, like in the 3K range, that just really bite, um, that really saved the amp. It really took that out. So it seems to kind of cut some of that mid-range out, the piercing mid-range. On the 421, I've noticed that you get a lot of more, a lot more beef just shooting it up uh, at the ceiling. And then a lot more high end, obviously, when you shoot it directly in. And you can literally use this as an EQ. So you want more low end and more fat, like mid range. You put it down here. You want a little more top. You just angle it more or less. And you can really use these 
um, positioning techniques as literally EQ in the physical world. When you do it this way, less EQ in the end, less uh, messing with tone and just the complex tones that come out of these things. Really, the less you can do with this, the better. So that really sums up my uh, entire recording uh, technique for electric guitar. I hope this really helped you. I'll be answering questions about this uh, episode all week on the Creative Sound Lab Facebook page. So next week, I'm going to continue with this same um, line of thinking for electric guitar. I'm going to go ahead and bust into how to um, set up the guitar amp, gain staging, um, just kind of the nitty gritty. And we're also going to take a, a listen to some of these mics. So I'll see you next week. Yeah.